Well, good afternoon, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Thanks for logging on to our uh, our uh, daily forecast video. It's uh, 3:55 in the afternoon Eastern Time, so almost four o'clock here in the Eastern Time Zone. Uh, almost uh, three o'clock in the Central Time Zone. Um, we have a mess headed our way, as you can tell, that we're going to talk about that in a long uh, with some uh, nice couple of warm-ups, but they could come at a price coming in, and uh, we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Today's video being sponsored by High Voltage Mobile DJ Service. You can uh, contact Nathan here at the number on your screen, 630-9465. Visit him on the web here as well at djhighvoltage.com, and make sure you tell him Southern Indiana Weather sent you. They do a great job, so if you're looking for a DJ, uh, please give them, give them a call. Check them out, all right? Here's the snow I was talking about, live uh, regional radar. Let me go ahead and put this into motion and give you an idea how the system is moving. And it's sort of one of these uh, type of things now where we're like, well, what else is new? More snow is coming in the area, right? I mean, this is just sort of par for the course. We're used to that. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to have a ton of accumulations. You can see these local storm reports popping up with an inch, half inch, inch and a half as it goes through here. But the other thing, if I just take this away and I'll take the temperature data away, I want you to watch how this lessens in time. As it gets closer to us, you've got more of the whites and light blues rather than the darker blues. So it seems to be lessening in intensity, which would be a good thing. Um, in general, it doesn't look like it's going to be a ton of accumulations tonight. Uh, but if we could target the area that this is going to affect uh, now that we're being able to actually see it, I would say uh, generally in, in this area is where you're going to find and I need to actually expand that a little bit, I should say, more like in, in this area. is generally, I think, where you're going to be able to find the majority of your accumulation coming through tonight based on the way this is tracking in. We'll keep an eye on it. As far as accumulations for the system tonight, not a whole lot. May need to actually, this is a map that I threw together this morning based on the data, but, you know, a model is just that. It, a weather model is just, just a model. It, once you see the real-time data and it actually happens, you can see. So I would put this trace to one inch line, probably more uh, closer to this area to encompass everybody. But in, in general, this gives you the picture. We're not looking at a very big snow today. Uh, and, and, and we may not even get an inch out of this the way it's decreasing, but I think some some places could so temperature wise is certainly cold enough to stick we're in the upper 20s here in the southern part of the state mid 20s as you go further north and uh, around 30 at the airport right now in Evansville so and temperatures will fall probably as this moves over you see this is the kind of temperatures that's moving our way so again uh, some minor accumulations expected out of this but uh, nothing too big we can track it out here on uh, future radar if I can get the right one picked up for you here Let's just time this into motion. There it comes in out of Missouri, and you can see as it moves over us, uh, just not really, uh, not not really that impressive on radar. Uh, these would be a darker shade of blue if it were a heavier snow, and then it's pretty much gone. And uh, really, so we're looking at uh, here six, seven, eight. 9, here's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. So this, again, this is not going to be a long duration event as far as what the uh, high resolution model is saying in general, really a half inch or less is all it's painting for us. So again, a dusting to maybe up to an inch and not a, not a terribly big snow. Now, that's sort of the picture of what we're going to be able to expect. Let's talk about, uh, for the short term anyway, let's talk more about the longer term and talk about what we're going to expect. The good news is uh, we're going to get a little bit of a break from the snow this week. That'll be sort of nice. The bad news is we've got some cold temperatures to deal with. And we have another potential snowstorm brewing for next week, in which I want to dive into and talk a little bit about tonight. Again, um, models this far out, you know, you take them with a grain of salt because they, they change like the wind. But nonetheless, they can give us a picture of what could happen. And um, later on down the month, we'll talk about a potential warm-up, too, that could come with a price. Let's go ahead and put this into motion. Here we are today, and you see that light snow moving towards us. And again, I know it's a very busy uh, look to us, but let me just explain it. Basically, what you're looking at is surface uh, pressures. The black lines are what we call isobars. They're lines of equal pressure. And then you got your high, highs and low pressures on here as well. The blue lines are... Uh, uh, are where uh, 
well, I guess the best way to explain this is you're looking at 500 millibar heights layered on here. And you, I know that sounds Greek to most people, but what it's helping us do is understand the rain snow changeover line. In general, the only thing that you really need to understand is the red is warmer temperatures, blue is colder temperatures as far as the lines go. The first blue line you see here is what we call the 540 thickness line. That's generally the rain snow changeover line. And so in general, anything north of that would be snow. Anything south of that would be rain. And, uh, and then the color shadings that you see on here are precipitation. That's basically what you're seeing as you go through this. Here's that light snow that moves through tonight. Not a very aggressive. In fact, if we were to look at the GFS's snowfall map, it cooperates with the high resolution models of giving us basically a half inch or so or less. Maybe up to an inch in places, but again, it's not very excited about it either. Either high pressure takes charge as you go into Monday and Tuesday. You've got a pretty decent storm system brewing to our south, but that's not going to affect us from the way things look. Then later on in the week, you've got another system brewing in here that, that uh, looks to affect the Great Lakes. That will cool our temperatures down and bring another reinforcing shot of cold air with it, unfortunately, as the front moves through. Uh, you know, it takes some snow showers here down into northern Indiana, and some of our other runs, it's taken it down as far as southern Indiana. So I'd say that we could still see the chance of a few snow showers with this, but it's not very aggressive on Thursday or Friday, either one. Right now, Valentine's day looks pretty good with this model with maybe just a few light flurries lingering around but high pressure kind of out to our northwest will keep it cold unfortunately as you'll see when we look at the temperatures in a little bit and then as we go into uh, valentine's night into saturday we're tracking what could be the next pretty decent sized winter storm Okay, here it comes out of uh, Iowa and, uh, and down into Illinois, and you see it's moving down. This is another little clipper system, so it's fairly fast moving. Here we start out at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning, the 15th, and you see the leading edge of the snow moving in. And you can see there it moves in. Here we are at 1 o'clock on Saturday. By the time 7 o'clock on Saturday comes, we've still got snow over the area. So, And then here we are at 1 in the morning on Sunday. So it looks like this is a pretty decent-sized snow event right now. Um, Again, that's subject to change. This far out, you know, we, we'll take a look at this model tomorrow, and um, it, it could it could paint, paint this as a very minor type of event. Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. But what it does what it does show for us really here is that this is one that we're going to want to watch. Okay, um, how far um, how much snow accumulations could we expect out of this? All right. Um, let me let me see where we're at here just to kind of point it out for you here is uh, southern indiana area right here where my mouse is you see this first little line of blue moving in this is what we call qpf quantity of precipitation forecast it's just basically a liquid amount of uh, precipitation and we'll take that and convert that into a snow so the first green line that you see here is two tenths of an inch this is probably going to be a very wet and heavy snow from the way things look because we're right on this rain snow changeover line uh, so that would make a 10 to 1 snow ratio. In other words, a tenth of an inch of liquid precipitation would make an inch of snow. So every every slice in time that we see this light green over us, that's at least two inches of snow during those previous, that previous six hours. So there's at least a couple of inches. There you go. In time, one more. And you're starting to get into some blues. So some of us are getting up into the, that starts the four tenths of an inch. There could be four tenths of an inch. That could be four inches piled on top of two inches for some people. That gives some people at least six inches out of this and other people another couple of inches out of this. So again, this is going to be one that we're going to have to watch because it could be a pretty decent snow system out of this. As far as what the GFS is actually painting for this, this is just the raw snow data. And there you can see whenever you start into these purples, you get into that six inch category. Uh, now it, it kind of takes very, uh, a very uh, steep uh, tight gradient here gives the Evansville metro area here pretty much just a dusting out of this but all you have to do is go up here into uh, just north of Princeton before you start to get into the inch and then uh, into the Washington Vincennes area you're into two three and even four inches and beyond sort of takes that uh, tight line over Dubois and Crawford and Harrison counties here as well so again this far out uh, you know this is going to change, but it gives the idea that next weekend could be uh, a messy type of a situation, something that we're going to keep an eye on, uh, certainly. All right. Now, beyond this, this will be one that we'll track this week to see how it does. You see beyond that, the red lines move over us, so that's a little bit of a warm-up. That would be welcome, but you get another pretty decent size and powerful cold front. Uh, you get a very strong low-pressure system here you got a cold front really that's bisecting the entire country here moving in our way this would bring us some rain on uh, next tuesday the 18th well monday the 17th this is uh 
zero z on the 18th which is tuesday well, actually this is uh, the time in england is the way these models work if to translate that back it would actually be seven o'clock in the evening on the 17th on that monday our time is the way that would work out so monday evening it looks like we could have some rain out of this is what this model is saying right now and some heavy rain at that i mean we're talking you know maybe a two or three tenths of an inch of rain accumulated in six hours so you know that that's a pretty decent little soaker that moves through. High pressure takes over for a little bit. Then you've got another storm system that moves our way. And you can see a very tight gradient with this. Um, watch this low pressure sort of uh, form and, and then eject northward. Starts out at a 991 low, which is a pretty impressive low in itself. All right, my apologies there, folks. I've been fighting a cold and just had a cough. And I didn't think you wanted to hear that. But you got a pretty impressive little low pressure moving here. Watch quickly how this moves in goes from uh, uh, down here to down here and then we get a decent little amount of rain because what it's doing remember winds around a low pressure are rotating counterclockwise so what this is essentially doing is just sort of pumping up moisture from the gulf in a fashion similar to this and then watch as it moves here from missouri watch quickly how it moves you're at a 998 low up to a 991 low and this is just uh, in, in other words you've got a deepening a very strengthening low pressure system uh, lows like that due to the Coriolis effect tend to want to go poleward in other words they start to go rather than east to west whenever they strengthen that fast they want to shift more towards a northward slant towards the pole and it's dragging a cold front behind it here when it does that when you get a deepening low that can also draw up a lot of moisture from the south so let's take a look at our temperature data for this we'll go to our we're at our 276 here and uh, let me just sort of back up here in time and show you what we're expecting here at our 276 on the models you can see it's actually pulling in 63 here in Evansville 61 and Huntingburg 60 all the way up here even in Bloomington so very warm temperatures being funneled in our way and of course with a very strong cold front like this is then you, you can definitely expect that yes this could be a recipe for potentially severe weather so we'll have to watch that for Thursday evening February the 20th again nothing is set in stone this far out but that's certainly one you want to flag whenever our normal is 45 and it's taking it up to the 60s some models even take it to the mid 60s with this that's definitely a signal for severe weather so we'll we want to see now not every indication uh, for severe weather is there just yet but this far out we're not looking for every indication we're just looking for the pattern and the pattern right now says this is one that we want to watch so not only are we looking for some snow this weekend on the 15th but then behind that the thursday following it on the 20th we want to take a look for what could be a severe weather event we'll follow it and see how that goes either way it's going to be a pretty heavy rain event i mean just look at as we put this in motion just look at, at the brighter shades moving over us so a heavy rain event at the least from the way this model is saying and potentially some rough weather Get a break in the action for a couple of days and you've got another system moving in that could bring us some rain and then watch this system here we are on the 24th of february 7 a.m pretty heavy rain again a very similar situation you've got a 995 low which is a reasonably strong low and then very quickly it, it moves right over us as well now this one doesn't uh, draw up quite the same strength and move to the north but you notice uh, because it doesn't the low tracks in an east to west fashion pretty much right over us what you would have with this would be a uh, warm front moving right over us and then a uh, cold front moving down like this with the low pressure uh, sort of right in here and that's going to draw up the cold uh, rather the warm moist air towards us and that would be a recipe for what could be a very nasty situation let's talk about temperatures here at our 372 with this as well and you can see goodness it's taking us all the way up to 70 in the Evansville area even up to near 60 towards Indianapolis so the, again this is a, a recipe for what could be some very nasty weather so with that nasty weather uh, again that's just something that we're going to have to watch all right and then as this moves on uh, you can see very quickly we get heavy rain with it as well so a severe weather threat potentially for the 24th as well so three systems over the next few days that we want to keep our eyes on really the 15th of february which is a saturday for a potential snowstorm and then both the 20th and the 24th of february we could which is a thursday and a monday we could end up with some bouts of severe weather and now am i saying that we're absolutely going to get snow next saturday no am i saying that we're actually going to get absolutely going to get severe weather on the 20th and 24th absolutely not but we are saying that we need to watch these and of course if you followed us for a long time you know that i'll be here to track these not only in the daily videos but in plenty of updates on facebook as we go throughout this uh, time period all right go to southernindianaweather.com you can check out our interactive radar you can watch the snow as it moves in you can also go over here and click on seven day forecast 
and you can see that we're looking at a really a cold week into the low 20s only warming up to near 30 later on in the week but then some snow possible for our next weekend so that's something that we're going to have to watch out and uh, we'll see where it goes uh, but some minor snows to deal with potentially tonight then a little bit of a quiet pattern really for the next portions of the week it, it'll be nice to just have a few uh, precipitation free days and then potentially some snow next weekend i'll be here with more forecast videos every day as we come through this week and we'll be tracking it for southern indiana weather i'm meteorologist michael wilhite have a great night folks and stay safe thanks for watching